Uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, one of the projects I've been waiting on since I got this van was to get the solar panel uh, properly mounted on the roof. Uh, while I was in Ehrenberg, I generally just set it out on the ground. It's a portable uh, Renogy 100 watt that's designed uh, with a built-in tripod system so you can set it outside. Uh, that works well except for when it's really windy. Uh, it'll blow away. Uh, but also, uh, of course, the catch is that when you do that, every time you want to break camp or need to go to town or anything, you need to disconnect it and uh, run the wiring up and put everything, put the panel back inside the van for safety while you travel. Uh, so that's not the end of the world if you only do it once in a while, but it can be a challenge. Um, also, you usually end up having to move it a couple times a day to keep it uh, pointed at the sun pretty good. So I've been wanting to get it up on the roof. Um, once I got back to Gillette in March, I figured out real quick that having the portable was a bit of a pain doing uh, urban stealth camping because there's not a lot of places you can discreetly put out a solar panel on the ground next to your van. So I ended up rigging up a little system that I'll show you here that has actually worked, uh, you know, for the last two months um, fairly well as a temporary measure. Uh, so I'll give you a quick show of how that works. All right, so basically what I did is I wedged it in between the roof racks and uh, adjusted them so it was tight and then used a ratchet strap across the uh, center where there's a seam there's no pan there's no glass in the center there it's aluminum lip on a that's what a panel folds in half and that has actually worked fairly well for me and i can you know you guys who drive around town at low speeds with this and it holds pretty good i do find it uh, for safety i take it down when i'm driving on the highway or if um, dealing with any uh, high wind situations to avoid a chance of it blowing loose and getting damaged. Well, the wiring so far, at this point, I just have running along and it comes into the uh, gap here by the back door. Um, I did try running it through the vent window on the side, but that actually leaked. Uh, so far, the back has not leaked. Um, if it does begin to leak or if I, you know, if I get around to it before then, um, I'll end up getting the land eventually probably and putting it on the roof and running them, running the wires down through the roof the right way. Uh, but this is kind of a temporary thing and it works for now, so I'm not going to tackle that today. What I am doing today is I'm going to, I picked up some hardware so I can install uh, the panel permanently and have it bolted onto the roof. So we'll go take a look at that now. Okay, so this is the hardware I'm going to be working with. Uh, the main feature is these uh, the pair of 48-inch uh, um, punched angle brackets. Those, these, these brackets are going to run along uh, horizontally and support the panel, and they'll be connected to the uh, existing roof rack. Uh, meanwhile, I also have some hardware. I went with stainless here to uh, reduce the chances of rust and that kind of thing. These one-inch bolts are going to be used to go through the brackets and the panel and then these longer bolts inch and a half bolts are going to be used to connect the, the brackets to the roof racks uh, i also picked up lock washers to make sure things stay tight and don't come loose while i'm driving around and the fender washers are for uh, the bolts that are going through the roof rack i wanted to give them an extra spread to make sure everything stays steady there so the next step I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to paint these angle brackets. Uh, that's not strictly necessary, but uh, for one thing it'll help reduce the chances of getting some rust or anything on them. The biggest dumb reason I'm doing it is because the roof rack is already black, as is the aluminum trim around the solar panel. So I wanted to keep everything matching as much as possible, keep it inconspicuous. So I just have some cheap black, uh, flat black spray paint that came from Walmart. I think it's about a dollar a can or something. Um, I've had reasonable success with it in the past, so we'll go ahead and use it for this project and see how it goes. So I got these brackets flipped over. Now I want to start with spraying the insides, then turn them over and spray the outsides. If you're worried about your table, of course, you'd want to put plastic down, but this table is my everything table from. Once in a while I cook on it, but more often than not it gets used for projects just like this. It's got glue all over it already and some other stuff, so yeah, it's just kind of my utility table, so I'm not too worried about a little black spray paint on it. Now if you're really worried about it and you want to do this right, you'd probably want to put several coats of paint on. 
waiting the recommended inter intervals between but I'll flip these over now and get the outside which is the part I'm really worried about anyways is the outside uh, so that it's as discreet looking as possible when I'm when I'm parked somewhere or traveling um, I have actually had people ask me oh is that a solar panel you got on the roof and it was a pr mounted pretty like I showed you there mounted real low profile and so I try to keep it discreet for those times when I do need to stealth camp in the city uh, right now unfortunately hanging out at a relative's place and uh, which is rather convenient because I don't have to worry about being so sneaky so just keep a low enough profile that the neighbors don't complain or something and which is not difficult to do when you're used to stealth camping basically this is a pretty simple install uh, you can go fancier for sure and uh, but I've seen installs even simpler than this and I've seen much more complicated ones I did look for aluminum and was not able to find anything heavy enough in our local stores here because it's kind of a small city well there they are that's definitely gonna look better on the roof than if they were unpainted and you know if I need to I can always touch something up while it's up there but I think this will work for well enough for this project besides that I'm almost out of paint now and I don't want to go buy more so. <laughs> so this is it and while this dries for a bit I'll go work on getting the panel down off the roof of the van energy panel now that it's down off the roof uh, the back side of it uh, you see the brackets on each side are fold out and those allow you to stand it up so I'm going to wire tie those uh, cable tie those to keep them retracted they have wing nuts on them but they come loose sometimes I don't want them falling down and vibrating against the roof so I'm gonna secure those and of course this is the where the wiring comes out these are the standard MC4 connectors and this is where the um, this charge controller was mounted originally uh, we took it off and it's mounted in the vehicle right now but it could go back on there again it just would be a matter of moving things around the wiring uh, so I'm gonna leave this on as well and just tape it down uh, I don't want to take it off in case I eventually decide to sell or move this thing on um, when I get a larger vehicle I'll almost certainly put more solar on it uh, and just and when I do that I'll probably end up just upgrading the whole system rather than trying to patch things together but these are great little uh, units um, there's the tag that comes with it uh, but if you're looking for an easy way to get started with solar and your solar needs are modest I would definitely recommend you look at one of these energy 100 watt kits or 140 watt kits uh, they're they're just really easy to use. The charge so the charge controller is mounted on it when it comes from the factory, and then it, you know these cables are actually connect to uh, a longer cable that has uh, alligator clamps on it, so you can just connect it to your battery. So it's real easy to use. You can put it out, and it comes with a nice case that zippers up and holds everything in it when you're not using it when you put it away for storage. So if you're looking for if your needs are somewhat modest, meaning uh, you're just running, um, you know, maybe a, a occasionally a laptop and some a phone, that kind of thing. Maybe maybe once in a while a, a cooler. That might be iffy if you're running a small refrigerator. Uh, but if you've you got pretty modest needs, this will do it for you. And uh, especially it'll work if you have a solenoid or, or uh, something that allows you to charge off the engine battery as well. Uh, then it would definitely work for you. But if you if you got basic needs, this is a real easy way to get started because it comes in a kit and all you do is just set it out and hook it up to your battery. You don't have to worry about wiring or mounting things or anything else. So it's a great way to get started with solar.
I've got these all secured up so they should not cause me any problems. And I am leaving the hardware, the original latches that let it fold shut, keep it closed when you fold it, the handle. I'm leaving all that stuff on because I may, as I say, I may pass this thing on to someone else in the future. So I want to be able to have it ready to be a portable unit again. how it's going together. And one of the reasons I want the L, the angle brackets is I wanted to support the panel underneath to give it some more strength. So that's just how it's going to go, right, like that. Even it out just a bit, make sure everything's level. Now it's pretty perfect right there. And honestly, I'll, be, I'll tell you the truth, this came out looking out a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought it might look a little more uh, hokey, um, so to speak, but, but as I said, I painted things black, I can touch it up if I need to in the future, but for now, the only thing that's not black is the stainless steel hardware. Um, it's just bolted to the side, I got two bolts on each side of each panel, and then these are bolted on. These are bolted down to the roof racks using, again, stainless steel hardware. That's the same one. I got one bolt on each corner. It's a little bit of a mess inside, so I can't easily show you the charge controller and the battery setup. But basically, that wire runs down from the solar panel, and it just goes into the charge controller. And from the charge controller, another set of wires runs out to the battery. You charge the battery, and then you can, you know, you run your wire from there for whatever you need for electronics. So a pretty simple setup. Uh, really, uh, you know, as far as a one-panel thing like this, it's basically within the realm of pretty much anybody can do this. Uh, you can start getting into multiple panels, and, it's, and you know things can get a little trickier. Uh, it's a more technical decisions need to be made, but but you know for a basic one panel like this, it's pretty simple to install. And uh, you can see how easily I did it today. Uh, the only thing that was set up in advance was the wire. Um, but like I said, it's just one wire that goes into the charge controller and one wire comes out to the, to the battery. So, uh, pretty simple setup there. And uh, hopefully you found this helpful seeing this done. Uh, it's not uh, anything fancy for sure. Uh, and there are definitely fancier uh, and more involved setups you can find on the internet. But you can find some simpler ones too. So, uh, the simplest thing I've seen is actually people just use like, flexible panels and just use the 3M PHB tape to glue them down. So that, that's how simple you can get on one end. But this roof has... Uh, this uh, bridge is in it, so that wouldn't work quite so well here. Uh, but but this, I did have the roof rack, so I put them to use, and it worked out well. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.